Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. I just want to let you guys know this video is a little bit different because there's actually two parts to it. The first part, which is on precision takeoff and precision landing, I actually did that quite a while ago, but I never did post it because I felt like it was kind of redundant. It's kind of been said and done too much already. And so I didn't post it, but I felt like I needed to because I want to get my thoughts out there and let you guys know what I think. So the first part of this video is just on precision landing. And the reason I want to share it with this video is because something happened in that video, which is relevant to the second part of this video, which has to do with IMU calibration. And so what I'm going to do is put a timestamp down in the description. If you've heard enough about precision landing, you can go ahead and skip that and get right into the part about IMU calibration. So here we go. Confidence. It's something that's rarely a natural trait. It's learned behavior through experience and wisdom. Think of some of the times where you tried something for the very first time like riding your bike or learning to drive, downhill skiing, using a power tool, many things like that. Most things in life require a certain level of safety and guidance before you begin to learn them. The more you engage in these activities, the less reliant you are on something or someone to back you up. The same goes for flying a drone. I'm not even gonna tell you guys how many shots that took, but I'll probably put some bloopers at the end in case you want to be amused. So one of the biggest reasons that the joy of flying has seen such massive growth is the amazing safety features that are built into these drones. Obstacle avoidance and vision positioning, GPS, and many other features provide the inexperienced with the confidence that they need to get started. Now recently, one of the most talked about features on drones is precision landing. And the reason that it's been discussed more recently is because it was not included on the Mavic 2 series when they were released in August. And it has sparked some conversations and even a little bit of controversy. In case you aren't sure what precision landing is, it's a feature that allows your drone to return to the position of where it launched from with incredible accuracy, like within a few inches. It truly is amazing when you think about it. Now the seasoned rock star pilots will say, there's no need for that. Learn how to land it yourself and you'll be just fine. But the newbies and the rookies, they say, but I need it to make sure that my drone comes back to me safely. Now both sides have valid arguments, but I will say that I think there are three reasons why precision landing is important and why I think every drone should have it. First of all, for new pilots, brand new pilots. Take me for example. Two years ago, I had never flown a drone before I got my Mavic Pro. Now on the one hand, seasoned pilots do have a point. They are correct when they say the best and safest way to land your drone is to use those amazing neural synapses that God gave you and control the drone yourself. On the average, human control outperforms AI every time. Well, so far. But the confidence that the Mavic Pro gave me with all of its avoidance features, including precision landing, was vital in the process of me learning how to fly. Now, did I rely on it? No, of course not. But just knowing that it was there made me feel better as I did learn how to control the drone over time. Now, the second reason for those rare instances where something happens that disallows you to manually control the drone yourself. Now, here's a very specific example, but one that could very easily occur. I have flown from my boat a few times and I've seen people fly from jet skis and snowmobiles and things like that. Now, is that risky? Yeah, but these are places where precision landing is pivotal. Should you be launching from an area like snow or near water? Probably not, but do we? Yeah, why? Because of the confidence that we have due to the automated features of our super expensive big boy or big girl toys, such as precision landing. If I launch from the shore and then do an active track on my boat and the drone loses connection for some reason, I want the confidence to know that it's gonna land exactly where I launched it from. Or even worse, if I happen to drop my controller in the water over the side of the boat, or it falls off the snowmobile into some deep snow and you never find it, then what? Automation equals confidence. Lastly, precision landing is a valuable feature for individuals that may not have the capability to land precisely. Now, Bill the Drone Reviewer was the first to mention this on his channel, and I couldn't agree more. Once again, it comes down to confidence, you guys. Precision landing provides security for less abled pilots to help make their flying experience less stressful and more enjoyable. Look, the Mavic 2 series are the only DJI drones besides the Tello, that don't currently have precision landing on them. Every other consumer drone they have released since the Phantom 4 has it. The Mavic Pro, the Spark, the Mavic Air, but not the Mavic 2. Why? 
They even put LED lights on the bottom of it, which claim to help with precision landing. But then when we get our drones, guess what? No precision landing. I think the biggest reason that this is an issue is the confusion as to why it's not on there. And why hasn't there been an explanation for its absence? As advanced as the optical system is on the Mavic 2 series, not having precision landing is very confusing. And that's why this is an issue. Now, is not having it a reason to not purchase the Mavic 2? Of course not. It's not vital but it should be on there for the reasons I just stated. So that's my two cents on the matter. I know I'm a little behind the curve on it, but I just wanted to share my thoughts with you because it's still an issue. This is the uh, precision landing with the Mavic Air. I'm trying to show how good it is. <laughs> All right, so... Uh... <laughs> All right, so that's not so hot. Um... I'm thinking I have to calibrate my IMU. So I'm gonna do that right now. So let's talk about the IMU. Now most GPS enabled drones have an IMU or inertial measurement unit. Now there's no need to get real technical here because really I can't, but the bare bones purpose of the IMU is to ensure that your drone is balanced and steady and traveling in the right direction. It uses accelerometers and gyroscopes to maintain position control. And many things besides aircraft have IMUs. Things like satellites and ships, gaming controllers, and even things like your fitness tracker have them. On our drones, it's important to occasionally calibrate the IMU because what happens over time is that as little adjustments are made by the IMU to correct acceleration and position and things like that, is that there's always small errors in those calculations. And what happens is as the corrections continue, these small errors build upon one another and essentially a snowflake can turn into an avalanche. So what are some of the problems caused by an IMU that is experiencing this snowball effect? Well, the most common one is drift. Your drone's gonna start to misbehave. It's not gonna travel in the direction that you want it to, and it just won't listen to you when you move the control sticks. This is usually the first sign that you need to calibrate. But there are other things that could happen, like what happened with my Mavic Air. Now, the first thing that I noticed is I was constantly getting the high wind warning. Even when there was zero wind, and I was holding still with the drone. I wasn't moving the drone at all. That high wind warning just kept popping up. Secondly, one day I was trying to active track my Mavic 2 Pro with the Mavic Air, which actually works, sort of, but what happened is it just went rogue. I locked on to the Mavic 2 Pro, and when I hit go, it just took off backwards by itself. Now, the last thing that really made me realize it was an IMU issue is when I was attempting to show the superiority of the precision landing of the Mavic Air for the first part of this video. And then this happened. All right, so this is, this is the uh, precision landing with the Mavic Air. I'm trying to show how good it is. <laughs> All right, so. Uh... <laughs> All right, so that's not so hot. So then I calibrated the IMU and then... Wow. <laughs> so since calibrating, I no longer get the high wind warning. I can now active track the Mavic 2 Pro. Like I said, sort of, you can't really move real fast. And the precision landing is once again precise. So how do you calibrate your IMU? There are already quite a few videos out there on how to do it, including the tutorial right from DJI. But I will let you know that for the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air and the Mavic 2 drones, the process is a little bit different for each of them. So I'm gonna go through them really quickly here, but just know that the app does walk you through it pretty clearly. So the process of getting to the IMU calibration screen is the same for all of these drones, for the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air, the Mavic 2 Pro, and the Mavic 2 Zoom. I'm using the Mavic Pro here for demonstration purposes, but the process will be exactly the same for all of these drones. So the first thing that you want to do is click on the three little dots in the upper right hand corner of the DJI Go4 app that will bring up your general settings. And then the next thing that you need to click on is that first icon at the very top. That is the MC settings, the multi-copter settings. It looks like a little drone. Go ahead and click on that. And then when that comes up, you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on advanced settings. And when that pops up, you're going to scroll down a little bit and click on sensors state. When that screen comes up, you'll see in blue letters, IMU calibration. Go ahead and click on that and you're ready to calibrate. When calibrating the IMU on the Mavic Pro, 
The instructions tell you to remove the propellers first. You actually don't have to do that. I've never done that before. Uh, and then also one thing that you wanna make sure is that it's on a level surface. I usually use the floor in my kitchen or else my kitchen cabinets because I know that those surfaces are level, but you do wanna make sure that you're doing it on a level surface. So for step one of the IMU calibration, you wanna make sure that the drone is sitting normally just as the picture shows. The second step is to set the drone on the starboard side or the right hand side. Step three is to set the drone on the left hand side or the port side. The next step is to set the drone up on the end with the camera pointing upwards. And finally, the last step for the Mavic Pro is to set it on its back. When that's completed, simply restart your Mavic Pro and your IMU is calibrated. To calibrate the IMU on the Mavic Air, just follow the instructions on how to get to the IMU calibration screen that I went over earlier in this video. Make sure that your Mavic Air is on a nice level surface. I do recommend removing the propellers first with a Mavic Air, simply because it just makes positioning a little bit easier. Also make sure that your prop arms are folded out when you start the calibration process. And go ahead and click on start. For step one, you want the Mavic Air positioned normally as shown in the picture. For step two, position the drone on the starboard side or right hand side. Step three, flip it over to the left side or port side. Step four, position the drone so the camera is facing downwards. Step five, position the drone on its end so the camera is facing upwards. And finally, for the last step, set the Mavic Air on its back. When that is completed, go ahead and restart your Mavic Air and you are calibrated. To calibrate the Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic 2 Zoom, make sure that you're on a nice level surface. Follow the instructions I stated earlier on how to get to the IMU calibration screen. Go ahead and click on start. For step one, you want the drone positioned normally as shown. Go ahead and leave the propellers on. The instructions do tell you to take them off, but you actually don't have to do that. Step two, you're gonna go ahead and set the drone on the port side first. Step three, you position the drone on the starboard side or right hand side. For step four, go ahead and position the Mavic 2 upside down. And finally, to complete the calibration, go ahead and set the drone on its back end so the camera is pointing upwards. When that has completed, go ahead and restart your Mavic 2 and you are calibrated. So as you can see, the process of calibrating the IMU is a little bit different for each of these drones. So just be sure to follow the instructions closely and watch the illustrations. So as you can see, it's actually quite simple. But one thing, however, that took me a while to realize the first time I calibrated my IMU is that you really need to watch the images because you may find yourself wondering what is taking so long when in fact you need to move the drone into the next position. I sat there for probably about five minutes wondering what the heck is wrong with my drone when I should have actually switched position over five minutes ago. So the bottom line is basically if your drone just isn't working the way that it used to or the way that you think it should be, calibrate the IMU first. It only takes about three minutes and it can correct a variety of issues. So I've decided that sometimes at the end of my videos, I'm gonna choose one comment or maybe a couple from previous videos and read them. Basically a little shout out. A very cool thing about having a channel is the conversations that I have with all of you guys. And sometimes I think it's kind of nice to share your thoughts with other people besides myself. So today's comment is from John Weber on my last drone footage editing video. John says, been watching your videos for about a year or so. I have a Mavic Pro Platinum. I'm a computer support analyst by trade. Just wondering what computer you use to process your footage. I've been using Premiere Elements 2018 to edit my footage. I'm finding though that it seems to take a lot of horsepower for this thing to run correctly. I have an i7 gamers laptop, but Premiere Elements still runs very, very slow. Wondering if you might have any suggestions. Hey, thanks for the comment, John. I have a computer from Computer Upgrade Kings. It's pretty pricey, yet it's an incredible machine. If you guys are all interested in it, please let me know down in the comments. And if there's enough of you that are interested, I will do a video all about it. Hey, if I gave you anything of value today, please click on that thumbs up button. Also, I wanna thank each and every one of you for subscribing and for watching today. As always, fly safe and fly smart. Hold the thumbs up. Confidence. What? Oh, I made it? Are you kidding me? I went in. Shut up. On the first time. Dang it, I screwed it up. All right, here we go. I'm gonna make a blooper video. I can't believe that. Confidence. Confidence. I'll probably never get it again.
All right. Confidence. Oh my God. No? Confidence. 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 Oh God. <laughs> Confidence. Dang it. Confidence. It's something that's rarely a natural trait. Did it go in? Okay. <laughs>